Morning, everyone. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining us on uh, what day three of uh, CES. So uh, today we're moderating a panel. Uh, we're going to focus on the application of road level weather. So uh, joining me, we have Mark Flolid, CEO of the Global Weather Corporation, and Penny Schleyer, who heads up uh, product marketing for our transport, uh, sorry, technology, media, telco, and retail sectors. So I thank you for both for joining me. As I think about you know, sort of this new reality that we're faced with you know, um, and, and sort of seeing examples of around us, Mark, um, the inclusion of weather data seems so central to so many aspects, supply chain, mobility, etc. Can you help me understand the, the um, impact and the challenge of getting down to sort of road segment level weather data? C certainly. Um, Weather that we've been using for many decades and so forth is, is typically developed from observational information that comes from satellites and weather stations uh, that the national weather services have around the world. And they provide us uh, global and regional forecasts. But as we move into this era of mobility, uh, what we need to do is we need to bring the weather down to the road level for safety purposes and so forth. And so uh, the location technologies, the, the here mapping that we have and so forth allows us to do that uh, so that now what we can do, rather than looking at weather pads, pa uh, patterns regionally, we can bring it down to a half a kilometer, uh, know how the weather's changing every five minutes, and not only know what the weather's doing, but what the road surface looks like. And we're able to do that today because of the technologies that are coming from here. Well, I mean, that's, that's tremendously accurate. You know, 500 meters, we can see that. You know, standing here, I can, I can look and I can and really see sort of 500 meters. So the, that's a tremendous amount of data. How are you sort of keeping that current? You know, because weather patterns change. Snow squalls, rain clouds, et cetera, move through. And that changes the dynamics on each of those sort of 500 meter segments, doesn't it? Yes. Well, the, there's, a, there's a couple of technologies that we rely upon. One is uh, that they call now casting. And we're all familiar with radar information and so forth. Well, that information in China and the US and Europe is reported to us every two minutes. And so what we can do is we can take that information and look at the direction of the storm patterns within the clouds to figure out uh, you know, where it's going to start raining, stop raining, where it's going to start snowing, every, every five minutes. Now, one of the other technologies, though, that we're going to be relying upon as we go into the future is the information that comes off the vehicle, because the vehicle is going to provide us information about not only the ambient temperature around the, the car, uh, but it'll give us information about is it precipitating or not through the rain sensors. And then we'll know something about traction control. We'll know when the car is experiencing slippage on the road. And so that will give us even more information to provide better and more accurate forecasts. Absolutely. And, and there's, there's endless possibilities in terms of how that can be used. So, so Penny, how, how is it that our partnership uh, is making that accessible? Uh, sure. So we're really excited to have Global Weather Corporation as, uh, on our marketplace. So um, we, together with our partners, we're building the most robust location-centric platform so that customers can come and build new solutions. They can collaborate with partners like Global Weather Corporation. They can bring their data and gain new insights. Uh, and when you pair that data, the weather data, with the location data that HERE provides, you really can create an, an enormous amount of new innovations and insights for driver safety or consumer engagement. And so, we are looking forward to building uh, an ecosystem of partners that will come and contribute their high-quality data um, so that they can you know, collaborate in a secure and private manner um, where we have all of the in infrastructure built for them so that they can do it uh, more easily. And I can imagine some of, this, some of the data, you know, like uh, the image behind us is snow. In other places, it's going to be rain, etc. Penny, you're, you're very focused in the, in the markets around, for instance, retail. You know, retailers have supply chain issues, 
you know, let's think about some of the ways in which um, retailers may benefit as we look at sort of the, the, the sort of the impacts on their business, some of the use cases that perhaps it can uh, set, solve from their perspective. Sure. So, you know, um, in today's competitive world, it's really you need to be able to deliver your products um, in hours. There, there's no longer lack of visibility into the delivery cycle, and so retailers are really forced to compete in a, an economy where Amazon is king, right? They deliver within hours. And so by having information about um, the weather in association with location, for example, if um, you have uh, uh, people who are delivering products to the home, um, if there's a disruption due to weather and traffic that can be detected and then the um, the app can actually automatically reroute that person so that they can get to the um, they can get to the person in a quicker way. So, go ahead. Oh, I, I just wanted to add that uh, one of the things that we do is we use this weather um, uh, to look at supply chain management because as weather patterns change, customers buy different items and so forth, and that can happen on an hourly basis in terms of the way that change, uh, changes. And so the supply chain management has to be very sensitive to the weather. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that we currently do for customers worldwide. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I think, you know, if we look at all these use cases, so I heard earlier, I heard safety, I heard supply chain coordination, I'm hearing demand generation. Weather has a tremendous impact across, um, you know, almost every industry. You have a you know, sort of quantified the impact of weather, you know, in any one of those industries and the, and the opportunities that it, that it represents. I see a smile, so I'm thinking yeah. it's got to be huge. Well, we're required to do that from a couple standpoints. One, verification of the quality of the forecast is something we spend an enormous amount of time at in terms of making sure that what we provide is, is accurate and we have confidence in what we're delivering. And we do quantify those numbers whether we're looking at uh, weather or we're looking at road surface conditions. But the other thing that, that uh, uh, our uh, customers look at is how does that affect their bottom line? And we particularly see that in the renewable energy business in terms of where we do accurate forecasts for wind and solar renewables and so forth because that, it then impacts how they interact with the grid. And then the other one that's more pertinent even more today, today in mobility is as we uh, are working with the autonomous vehicle industry, uh, the issue that they have is autonomous availability, understanding when, uh, how much availability will you have the, the vehicle have for driving in autonomous mode. And that can vary by season. And so one of the things that uh, we do right now is we forecast the road surface conditions every half kilometer, every 15 minutes, and we give them uh, information in terms of what that availability is going to be and what confidence we have in that. That's a significant impact to the value proposition of autonomous vehicles. And Absolutely, and very, very much aligned uh, with, with the way that we at here look at the, um, look at the roads, you know, the, the reality index. Yeah. How much confidence do we have that this is the current situation um, because it's, it, we're living in a dynamic world. So, listen, Large amount of data, as we talked about, you know, 15 minutes every 500 meters. What's the, what's the sort of spread of this? What's yeah. the sort of global coverage? Well, let me give you an example of an a image. Uh, this is in uh, between uh, outside of Munich on the Autobahn on the A8. Typically, we, you know, we forecast weather kind of in regional patterns. But what we're doing today is we forecast not only the weather patterns, but the road surface conditions along the road, and you can see this by, is indicated by these different posts, as you see in the roads, that as we move along, we know whether we're dealing with dry roads, near dry roads, wet roads, very wet, and so forth. And so this is the kind of information that we deliver today, and we do this worldwide, and we do it for all classes of road, whether we're looking at major freeways or we're looking at local roads. So when you say worldwide, are we talking worldwide, we're talking you know, from, from, you know, this is, we have developers around the world that really are, are poised to take advantage of this data, correlating the road infrastructure, the weather, the data that they're bringing in, into the platform, et cetera. Huge opportunity here, I would imagine. 
what can they expect in terms of the, um, the information that's now available to them? Well, uh, well today, because of what we're doing with here, uh, we can provide weather and road surface information on all your roads uh, by, by, uh, by here class, road class. Uh, we right now, in terms of our focus, uh, when we work with the, the auto OEMs and the, uh, for infotainment purposes and uh, auto, autonomous vehicles, their focus is primarily Europe, North America, and China. And so that's our concentration right now, but we're putting together these solutions for uh, Australia and other places in the world. Fantastic. So when we say worldwide, it really scales to what you're doing. And scale is really important to making this even possible because you can't have a bunch of customized one-offs. You have to have something that fits with scale. And that's what, that's what you provide us. Absolutely. And, and, and what you... Just, I think that's the benefit that the platform offers is that we have partners that have high, the highest quality of data. They have enterprise level data. So it's not just a one-off. And so developers can come and operate in a standardized way uh, and gain access to just a, a depth of data. And uh, one of the things when you were working through the, the image back there, I think of my teenage son who's you know, driving in Chicago to school and I worry about how is he going to make it through the winter. And so when you, I'm just so excited that the opportunity is there to pair weather data with some of our location data as well as data from our other partners like Nira Dynamics who has data about the uh, road roughness. Um, so they have the tire pressure information. So you can anticipate uh, identifying potholes or raise alerts to those drivers who aren't necessarily as skilled and experienced as, <laughs> as their parents. So um, I'm really excited about the platform and the partners that are coming and the opportunities that are there. And that's a good point because we're already interacting with your partners because uh, for companies like Nira and Move AI, uh, their customers that uh, they utilize our weather information in order to provide their solutions that look at road roughness or weather risk and so forth. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, Matt, let, let me just stay on that because you're right, both of you, that there's no one company today that can solve all of the needs. You know, supply chains are complex, safety is paramount, also complex. It takes an ecosystem. So, help us understand you know, why here, why now, um, and what it takes to be a good ecosystem, you know, uh, partner from your perspective? Well, why here, why now? Uh, it, one of the reasons is because the mobility, in, uh, the con connected vehicles and, and, and uh, the mobility industry really has you know, really raced ahead. It's, it's, it's kind of pulling the rest of the industry along and we're really trying to catch up. So why now? Well, well because the industry's demanding it. It's demanding it for not only uh, just better information, but for safety uh, information, you know, right now in terms of what we're, we're, uh, what we're involved in, like with the autonomous vehicles. Um, and what was your other, your other? Oh, just sort of, you know, what makes for a good ecosystem partner? You know, you, you, uh, you, you really, um, Again, it gets back the, to the issue of scale, uh, you know, for us because uh, we need a solution because uh, when, we, when we work with, uh, you know, your customers, uh, you know, the auto OEMs and so forth, to have a solution that just works in the UK or in, it's not good enough or in, they need something that's scalable and that includes all the world, like I said earlier, in terms of China and so forth. So scale is really the number one issue. The other thing that's really important that uh, we haven't really mentioned too is also that uh, the investment that's going into the technologies in the autonomous vehicles areas for ADOS capabilities and so forth, that's really important too because we'll rely upon that. So what we provide and what you provide has to kind of be a convergence with that technology. And that's what we're seeing today, is that convergence of all those things coming together from mapping to location to safety and so forth, which is driving the need for this. So really what I'm hearing is it gives you a vehicle to you know, monetize your, your core asset. But also what, what you just said there seems to be that it's going to give you um, 
feedback that helps build that confidence uh, factor associated with each of these different road segments. Absolutely. Fantastic. Well, listen, for those that are uh, interested in more, uh, at noon uh, today, we're going to be uh, meeting with APCOA to talk about uh, next-gen uh, navigation creating expanded, frictionless, and safe driver experiences, so very complimentary to this session. Uh, there are a number of sessions that I would um, encourage you to, to explore. First of all, over in the floor over here, we have the platform where you, know, you can find the uh, Global Weather Corporation uh, data uh, in the marketplace, along with those platform capabilities to build applications with your data, with our data, with the Global Weather Corporation's data. Uh, we also have supply chain visibility. We heard some effect on that. We heard about sort of driving demand. There's retail and, uh, and consumer engagement. And we heard about driver safety and navigation, which is over in our connected driving uh, um, niche over here. So please explore. Um, but thank you very much for uh, the time you spent well, with us. Well, thank you really so appreciate much. It. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Penny. Thank you. Thanks, Penny. Thank you.